Hey guys. So this uh, Toll and Henson Devil here is the Sun 386i. That's right, 386i is in powered by, unsurprisingly, the i386 processor. This is uh, obviously an oddity in the Sun line. After this they really focused on their Spark architecture, but this was their Sol uh, up until of course the uh, Opteron systems foray into x86. This one was produced in 1989. They were introduced in 1988. The last one rolled off the line in 91 and the systems were end of life in 96. The machine that you see in front of you is a extended cabinet. We jump off. The base cabinet is here down. You can see the plastic's a bit more yellow. And then this is an expansion chassis on top of it. Each has their own individual power supply. Uh, we can see, uh, obviously, a three and a half inch floppy drive. We've got a tape drive here. I think this is a 90 meg tape drive. And it looks like it even has a tape in there. Huh. Who knew? One of these machines I actually have Sonos sources. Look, you learn a new thing. Uh, so, again, an oddity. Intel. So, so, where does this come from? When this machine was out, 88, or at least when it was conceived, 86, 87 presumably, um, the general question that everybody asked was, does it run PC software? Is it PC compatible? The PCs had had a huge uh, explosion of popularity, as uh, anybody who lived through it can attest. And even businesses who were used to running on Z80s and things like that knew they needed to run PC software. So, this machine bridges the gap between the Unix workstation and the single user, single process DOS system. When it runs, it boots up into SunOS. Uh, the only release of SunOS that runs on these is the 4 series. Uh, it started with 4.0.0 and ends in 4.0.2 patch set. The system comes up in the X windows and then you can, if you want to run your DOS software, run a DOS emulator, unsurprisingly called DOS, which will then allow you to load software off your floppy and install it onto the internal hard disk uh, where it gives a false uh, DOS compatible path system and you can run whatever you need to run. Uh, even cool though is that um, you can run multiple DOS emulated instances. So you can have three DOS windows open and there you are, you have your limited worthless DOS system running multi-user. Cool, huh? So Sorry, multi-process, my bad. Why don't we pop off the sides and have a look here. If we start uh, by opening it with the top cover here. And the expansion chassis. There we go. So we have a uh, nice big supply. I think this is 120 watts. And then two five and a half inch full height bays. We have our tape drive here, a uh, 60 meg. And then you could mount in a full height five and a quarter inch hard disk on these lovely little slide rails here. See, I've got our extra SCSI cabling here. Now, the expansion unit, if you unhook a couple screws, just lifts clean away. I don't actually have the top cover for this. It would usually go where this expansion chassis is, so I'm not going to pull it off. But, um, standalone unit. Rotate it and knock everything behind. You can see we've got power, power supply, toggle, and then SCSI terminator and our SCSI cable. And the SCSI cable just comes with a little shorty one thing. It looks like this. And we have our enormous DE50 heater. And that connects to oh, let me control the back panel here. The SCSI off the machine. If we open the main system, if we open the lower cabinet here. Go. 
can see inside. Quite densely packed. We have the primary hard disk. This is a 327 meg SCSI drive. Power supply. Memory board. Frame buffer. And then in behind there is the main board. If I uh, flip it over and release you. Oh, it's also rather heavy by the way. Like really quite heavy. If we release the power supply. And then there's a second one down in there. While crawling around, you can see the uh, drive cabling. Apparently, I had a uh, rodent come visit me because you can see the uh, pin one here. This has been nibbled away and exposed. Uh, as I said, it's a three and a half inch drive, but we have. Five and a quarter inch cable connector. And if you look in there, you can see there's actually a little adapter board. So presumably, you can mount a uh, five and a half inch drive in there and pop out this blanking plate and just use a standard, uh, use the standard hookup. SCSI cable here, which naturally won't tuck out of the way. And going to the close up, we can remove the supply. So we have our big power connector there. 